Today on the 12 Days of Defense, we're going to cover one of the most important information models to hit information security in the last couple years, and that is the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Stick around to learn what it is, how to use it, and how to use the ATT&CK Navigator web application to understand and prioritize the most important tactics and techniques for your SOC to pay attention to. All that and more today on the 12 Days of Defense. Hello, welcome everyone to the 12 Days of Defense. My name is John Hubbard. Today we're going to be covering a really, really useful treasure trove of data, and that is the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Now, if you're not familiar with MITRE ATT&CK, uh, just head on over to attack.mitre.org and you will see this website here. I want to explain what this set of data is for, how to use it, what it contains, and then show you a practical application of how to take what's in here and then automatically organize it into what's going to be the most useful and relevant items for you and your SOC. So let's get started. First off, what is MITRE ATT&CK? MITRE ATT&CK is largely a set of tactics and techniques known to be used by attack groups when they are perpetrating some kind of intrusion into an organization. The items that you see across the top here are called tactics, and they are what an adversary is trying to accomplish in a given stage of an attack, such as persist in the environment, or execute code, or get initial access. And below these, there are columns of what are called techniques, and the techniques are specific ways of getting the tactic done. There are certain techniques that belong to multiple tactics, and each of these techniques may be broken into a parent and a child item. You'll see some of these have these gray bars here. This is a fairly new addition to the MITRE ATT&CK framework, some of you may have not seen yet. Uh, scheduled tasks and jobs, for example, that is a parent level technique that can be accomplished through at or scheduled tasks or at with Linux, launch D, cron, and system D timers, for example. Those are the child level techniques. Every single one of these items can be clicked on and you can jump into, let's say, at for Windows and it will describe what this specific technique is for people that may not know. And then it has all of this metadata that goes with it, the tactics it belongs to. So the at technique is part of the execution tactic, persistence tactic, and privilege escalation. It may be used for accomplishing any of those things. And then we have data sources where you can find evidence of the at command being used in Windows for part of an attack. We see where it's listed under a sub technique of, and we see the version and the created date and the last modified uh, date for this particular technique. We have some examples of when this was used. We have mitigations that you can apply to stop this being used as a technique of, as part of an attack. We also have detection capabilities here. So first and foremost, the MITRE ATT&CK tactic and technique list is a great way of familiarizing yourself as a blue team member with what attackers are going to do. In the past, this has been a really, really hard thing to accomplish. Now we have this beautiful organized set of data that tells us this information. The other data is information on the groups that use these various attack tactics and techniques lists of known threat groups like APT-17, Black Oasis, or any of these, there's many of them here. We have software, which is used by groups. So let's say APT-1, for example, could use something like Agent Smith. There is a group-centric organization. There is a software-centric organization. And then we have this beautiful list of different matrices as well that will subdivide these items into Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and cloud environments. And within cloud environments, you can break it down even further into the different cloud service providers, which is really, really cool, as well as generic software as a service uh, type items. We also have the mobile matrix as well. Most people are going to stick with just looking at the entire enterprise matrix. And so what you should look at this as is a list of items that you might need to be concerned with for attacks in your environment. And I say might because there are certain items here that are going to be more important than other ones, right? Uh, not every attack group is attacking every single company and not every attack group uses every single tactic and technique. So your job as a blue team member is to first understand who are your attackers. If you can do some kind of research and say, we're in pharmaceuticals, we're in manufacturing, we're in the entertainment industry, and you can look up recent attacks and say, all right, well, who's been behind attacks attacking groups like us? 
you can start to narrow in on who your probable attackers are. And then with that information, you can pivot over to here and you can look at the groups list and say, ah, APT1. Well, APT1, if you click on it, it will actually tell you the specific tactics and techniques that APT1 is known to use. So this research is largely already done and organized for you if you know the name of a group that you are potentially worried about attacking your organization, which is awesome. So with some casual Googling, with some threat intelligence from your vendors, or really as anything as a starting point, you can take specific group names and you can convert them into what that group actually does to perpetrate attacks. That's a really, really useful thing because once you know that information, then you can look at the mitigations and the detections for each of those techniques and then ask yourself, does my SOC know how to do these things? Are we stopping these types of tactics and techniques? Can we detect when this sort of thing is being done to us? And so one of the key things I wanna show in this video here is how to do this in the simplest way possible. And the answer to doing that is the MITRE ATT&CK Navigator. If you Google Attack Navigator, you will easily get to this website, MITRE hosts it themselves. You can also download a copy of this application from GitHub if you wanna host it and run this all locally. I'm just gonna do this online and give you a walkthrough of how this workflow works. If you're trying to answer the question, what does my SOC need to care about most based on a list of attacker names that you have predetermined that you're concerned about? So we're gonna start with the scenario and we're gonna say we've done some of this research and we have found out that maybe North Korea is a country that is known to attack organizations like the one that I work for. If you look in the news recently, there's plenty of instances of North Korean attributed attacks related to COVID and other such things. And so what we might do is we could go over to the groups list here and we could just look for any mention of North Korea uh, and pick out a few group names here. And this is just for example, you would of course wanna be more meticulous about this and get all of the group names associated with North Korea with some deeper research if you were doing this for real. I'm gonna just do it this simple way. So North Korea is known to be called APT37 in some cases, APT38 and Kim Suki. Let's take that information and convert it into a set of tactics and techniques that we might expect to see if we were attacked by a North Korean based threat actor. So over to attack navigator. When you open up the attack navigator page, you're going to be facing this blank screen here. And what you want to do is create a new layer. It's going to ask you which matrix you want to work with. In our case, we're just going to use the enterprise matrix. So we'll click on enterprise. And you'll see here that this is basically the same matrix that we saw before of tactics and techniques. You can open up each of these items. You can click on these things and you can pivot to additional information. If you right click on it and go to view tactic, view technique. What we are going to do is leverage the information that MITRE has so helpfully already put into this tool for us to create a really nice, easily constructed visual representation of what these threat actors do. Right here, we can click on that button and open up the threat group selection kind of dialogue here. And we are going to go down to APT37 and hit select. And when you do that, you have to then click this to make that box go away. And you'll see that there were some of these boxes that are now highlighted. It's a little bit faint. What we wanna do is mark these. And we're going to go up to the scoring box and we can just pick any number here. I'm going to pick 10. And you'll see that we have now in about 10 seconds uh, went from the word APT37 to a list of highlighted tactics and techniques in MITRE ATT&CK Navigator. And that's awesome and that's a big time saver. But we're interested in what all of these different groups do. And so what we can do is not just put it all on this screen, which is possible if you selected all of those groups right here, but we can do better. We can make a separate tab in ATT&CK Navigator for every single one of these groups. And that's what this tool is designed to do, to help you prioritize and look for overlaps across multiple groups. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to call this layer the APT37 layer. And we have that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and repeat this process for the other two threat groups. We'll just fast forward through that so you don't have to listen to me talk while I do it. All right, at this point, I've entered all three threat groups that I'm pretending that my organization is concerned about. And what we're gonna look for here is any overlap between all of those individual techniques that have now been highlighted. 
To do this, we can use a feature of Attack Navigator that a lot of people don't realize is there. It's called Layer Math. What we do is we do the process I just went through, and then we go through one additional step to create a fourth layer. And that fourth layer is going to add the score from each individual technique from the first three tabs, and then make a fourth tab that shows us with a heat map style different coloration of each score, which scores are overlapping and which ones might be unique to a specific group. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna hit new layer, and then I'm going to hit create layer from other layers. When I do that, I then have to hit Enterprise Attack V8. And then up here, you will see that it popped up A, B, and C. And down here, I have a box that says Score Expression. So I'm going to hit A plus B plus C. And you can use multiplication, you can use subtraction, whatever you want here if you're trying to do a different kind of scenario. This is a very basic way of just going straight forward, add these things together based on the score. And so that's all we have to do here. If you wanna mix colors or comments or states or filters or anything like that, you can get way more fancy with this. I'm just walking you through the base kind of workflow here. Once that's there, we hit create. And now what we have is a matrix that is combined from these three tabs that is colored based on the score of those combined items. So we have right here, one with a score of 20, one with a score of 10, and you'll notice they're colored different. If we zoom out, we can see there's a whole bunch of items here that are actually overlapping from these three different groups. So now, we wanna get this in a little bit more usable form, because we want to answer the question, which one of these are the most important, and maybe sort those to the top. So here's what I always do when I get to this stage. Click on this right here a few times, and you will eventually end up sorting it such that the uh, score is descending. So the highest score is going to be on the top here. Process injection, score of 20, modify registry, obfuscated files and information, both have 10, and then everything else below here was nothing. What we can then do is then flip the colors to make a little bit more sense. By default, it goes red to green. We want green to red. Makes most sense to me to have the most important one in red. So that's what I like to use there. And there you have it. You have a list of now three different threat groups, what they do combined, and then the overlap between those. So what you could look at this as is a list of items that if you hadn't done any kind of preparation for a specific type of threat actor, now you can go back to your SOC and say, process injection. Ah, that's something that's used by multiple threat groups that we're concerned with. And so that's one that we need to pay attention to. Drive-by compromise, that's another one. Process discovery, system information discovery. All of these items are things that your SOC needs to pay extra attention to because they're known to be used by threat actors that you are concerned about. What can we do with this information then? If you wanna save this information, there are a few different options here. You can download this layer as a JSON bit of text so that you can save what you've done and then bring it back up later. You can export this to Excel. If you wanna save this into an Excel format, you can render this to an SVG. So if you wanna make a poster out of it or something like that, uh, there's plenty of options there. And there are other options for filtering as well. You can take information out that doesn't apply to specific platforms that maybe you're not running. If you're not doing AWS or GCP or Azure, you can see things kinda of change in the background here as you subtract items and what they apply to. So if you only wanna see Windows, there you go. You have options like that as well. So this is a really nice tool and a really nice platform for getting fast information. If you wanna go deeper on this set of tools and what you can do to use these tools to measure your SOC, I have a paper that I wrote not too long ago back in July of 2020 called Measuring and Improving Cyber Defense Using the MITRE ATT&CK Framework. Uh, this is something I wrote for the SANS Analyst Reading Room. I will put the link to this free paper in the description below. So there you have it. There is your quick tip on how to use Attack Navigator and the Attack Dataset. This is an incredibly important and useful set of data for blue teams. In the past, we had no common way of communicating how attackers worked or the different tactics and techniques they used, but now a lot of vendors have seized on this format for naming attack attempts that might be detected by their tools. You see a lot of different uh, endpoint and network controls picking up these naming conventions. And so the SOC is kind of settling around this set of terminology as a standard for this sort of thing. It is a very, very useful 
thing to be familiar with and leverage as much as you can. Finally, what I want to say about the MITRE ATT&CK framework is that it's constantly in flux. The really cool thing about this is that the MITRE ATT&CK team works really, really hard to keep this information up to date as much as possible. So every time a new attack technique is observed in the wild, they consider if it needs to be added, keeping this up to date. The other thing is that post-exploitation used to be the focus of the matrix, and you may have known it in the past, Clearly, they are starting to bring in some of the other information from the pre-exploitation phase of an attack as well. There used to be two different matrices, one called attack and one called pre-attack. They are starting to merge those items, and so you can see here the reconnaissance phase and the resource development and the initial access pieces, which are currently being added. And by the time you see this video, it may be months from now, and this may look slightly different. But that's the cool thing about this. It's always up to date, and they're always looking to have the best and most relevant information on this. So if you ever see the MITRE team out and about, buy them a beer because this is an awesome effort that everyone is benefiting from. Very, very great set of data here, and we thank them deeply for all of the work they put into this. And there you have it, the MITRE ATT&CK Navigator and the MITRE ATT&CK Matrix and how to use it and the data that is inside. If you haven't seen this before, if you haven't seen this as part of your tools or from your vendors, you are definitely going to see this in the future. Keep an eye on this one. It is definitely going to up your game as a blue teamer. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you got some value out of this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and tell a friend. Help get the word out about this series. I would appreciate it. And be sure to check out the resources we have down in the description as well. I will see you on the next episode of the 12 Days of Defense.